happy Easter, everyone. Put down those chocolate eggs for a minute because we've got Sunday's top stories for you, including who won gladiators and why we eat chocolate at Easter. But first, if you've not seen the Gladiators final, then this is your spoiler alert. <laughs> Last night, Wesley, Finlay, Bronte and Mary Louise all went head to head in the competition to see who would be crowned champion of Series 1. And the winners were Finlay and Mary Louise. They held their own against the fearsome Gladiators and managed to conquer the Eliminator to claim victory. Bronte was on my tail the whole time. What a competitor to go up against. And she was so close to the end. There was a photo finish. I think we're both winners in my eyes anyway. Congratulations to you. How does it feel to lift that trophy? Wow, this is uh, definitely the most surreal moment ever. From five-year-old me playing Eliminator in my granny's living room to lifting the real deal. This is unbelievable. Thanks, guys. Well done to them both. Now, did you notice the clocks went forward overnight? Well, here's Shaniqua to explain why. We change our clocks twice per year. In springtime, they spring forward by one hour, and that happens on the last Sunday in March, while in autumn, they fall back by an hour on the last Sunday in October. The whole reason this happens is to be able to have the maximum amount of daylight as possible. The March time change means there's more daylight in the evenings and it's darker in the mornings. While in October, it means it's brighter in the morning, but sunset comes one hour earlier in the evening. Now this system was introduced in 1916 to give people who do most of their work outside, like farmers, as much sunlight as possible to work in. The idea of the time changing has been around for centuries. It's thought that even the Romans did it too. But do we still need it? Some experts say it upsets people's sleep schedules and fewer people work outdoors, so it's not needed. The UK isn't the only place to change the clocks. It's something that takes place in more than 70 countries all around the world. OK, I think it's time for me to go. Thanks, Shaniqua. Now, it's Easter Sunday, officially the day to crack open those Easter eggs. But why do we eat them at Easter? Well, here's Ricky. Now, traditionally, Christians weren't meant to eat eggs in Holy Week, which is the week leading up to Easter Sunday. This meant on Easter Sunday, they were often given eggs as a treat. In the Victorian times, a tradition developed where people gave each other cardboard eggs covered in satin and filled with Easter gifts. Now, there's evidence of chocolate eggs in France and Germany in the 19th century, but chocolate back then used to be quite bitter and hard, not like the sweet stuff we know and love today. Now, it wasn't until 1873 that a hollow egg was first sold in the UK by chocolate company Fries. Luckily, since then, we've got a lot better at making chocolate. Now, you're probably wondering, how about the Easter Bunny? How does he fit into all of this? And uh, that's a tradition that goes a bit further back than the Victorians. The story of a bunny coming at Easter is said to be linked to a pagan tradition, which is a religion that has been around in England before Christianity. But it's not an Easter bunny for everyone. In some areas of Germany, eggs are delivered by a fox. And in Switzerland, it's a cuckoo. So if you're preparing an exciting Easter egg hunt this year or just looking forward to some chocolate, well, now you know why. Happy Easter. Now, a new Sir David Attenborough series starts tonight, looking at how animals are coping with climate change. Here's Ricky again with more. There are more than 6,000 species of mammals on Earth. And as our world changes, so must they. Sir David Attenborough's latest series captures new mammal behaviours caught on film for the first time as they adapt to a world dominated by us. Humans have changed three quarters of the Earth's surface. We're changing the world in so many different ways and animals are having to adapt in real time. It's essentially evolution in action. We see otters making their way across roads in Singapore and polar bears heading inland to hunt reindeer as the sea ice melts. 
While there are some sad sights, there are also some success stories. Pigtailed macaques in Malaysia have found a way to survive in a new habitat. They've started coming into palm oil plantations, which were apparently devoid of life. But these palm oil plantations have been completely overrun by rats. And these pigtailed macaques, now they're adapting to starting to eat rats. As camera technology has improved, it now means the animals can be filmed at night time. In one episode, we see the nocturnal life of a fennec fox filmed by moonlight. It's hoped through properly sharing our planet, we can protect these amazing mammals in the future. Well, you can catch that on BBC One at 7pm tonight. Well, that's all the news that you need for today. I hope you have a lovely Easter. Enjoy all your chocolate eggs if you have them. And if you want more news, then head online where you can also test your news knowledge with our quiz of the week. Have a fantastic Sunday. See you later.